So hey guys, you're here with Bo, Cryptocurrency Australia, you're here with The Lark, we've coming What's to you. What's up guys? This is our second attempt, we tried this last week, we failed, <laughs> <laughs> we failed dismally, so we've come back again, um, Lark's been really generous with his time, he's a super busy guy, and um, we've been trying to make this happen for a few weeks now, so we're just going to have a chat guys, talk to each other, just there's nothing scripted just completely open and honest chat um we'll see where it goes and uh yeah i hope the subscribers enjoy absolutely absolutely hey you know you're, you're a busy dude too you know this is the thing is uh when you when you kind of realize when you start doing um you know a youtube channel it's uh, it gets busy really quick it's <laughs> it's crazy and like we we were chatting about last week it's a learning process so like the more videos you do and the more you check out of other people's content, you kind of learn the best way to operate and how to become more and more efficient with your filming, your research and your editing. That's it. That's it. You know, it's, uh, there's so many little tricks of the trade that you go on to, but I think one thing that you realize too, when you start actually looking into it is that there's so many people out there in the crypto space who need help and i'm sure you get a lot of these emails too people just email me asking what should i do how do i set this up you know what are your strategies and all these different things and of course that's a lot of the video content i think we make is trying to get people information but actually a lot of people just email you to just say hey can i help can you give me some help here please yeah 100 percent. that that's the thing because and the, the crazy thing is that's only going to get more and more and more and not just because the channel's growing but because more people are finding out about cryptocurrencies and more people want to get involved and it's so exciting and and you know people are making money and that's the crazy thing and i get that as well you know i've had people ask me for private tutoring i've had people just email me for help and it's amazing but it's it's trying to work out the best way the most efficient way to get that content to people to help to help them and put it in a way where it helps everyone exactly exactly because you, know, you only have so many hours in the day right and actually by producing the video you kind of get to the most amount of people and that that's one of the great things about it too you know so how how do you find the new zealand space like are you kind of like one of the only cryptocurrency youtubers in new zealand to my knowledge yeah i mean i guess i, I haven't seen anybody else I haven't heard anybody else tell me about anybody else and i you know I guess I might be, and it's a New Zealand small country, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> and the and the crypto scene is, I think, fairly quiet here compared to a lot of places. You know, I saw you did a, a video recently talking about how sort of we have these bank restrictions and things like this, and that might feed into it a bit. But but really, people just don't know that much about it here. And there's you know definitely a lot of uh, my subscribers are from new zealand and they're really active in it and they're really interested in it i know there's bitcoin meetups you know here in town and in auckland and stuff like that so there is an active community and it's growing but it's very very small as in most places of course but i feel like you know uh, you get much bigger crowds in some places mm, for sure well you know as we spoke about last week too australia for some reason seems to be so progressive on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency rules and regulations. I mean, we've got ATO guidelines out for our tax. We've got ASIC um, that's even commented on uh, investing in cryptocurrencies in, with your self-managed super, which is a really big deal. And they've even released guidelines on ICO. So I, I hope that New Zealand sees Australia as a case study and they adopt and follow Australia's lead. Yeah, same. I really hope so too, you know, because there's so much uh, potential for uh, New Zealand, you know, again, to be a sort of the front run. I know we've got a few crypto projects here. Um, Navcoin, for example, those guys are based in Auckland. You know, oh, that's wow. a really exciting project. Wow. They've been working on it for a few years. So it's not that nothing's happening here by any means, but we certainly could have a lot more. I know you know, New Zealand is trying to make itself to an extent into sort of one of the tech hubs uh, of this region. And, you know, it's got to get the laws to go with it, basically. Yeah, that's the crazy thing, you know, I find um cryptocurrency has such libertarian ideals and that's what i love about it i love how decentralized it is i love how anyone can get involved that has a computer and the internet it, it, it is incredible but i also know that for true mainstream adoption and for true integration into the modern world the government we you know we need them in a way we need them to accept it we need them to do what they need to do to make themselves satisfied with it Otherwise, I just think there's always going to be this competing interest between the people 
and the government. So as much as uh, governments do get in the way and tend to over-regulate and, and too much red tape, I think we also kind of need them to be on board at the same token. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. They absolutely have to be on board. And I think that's a lot of what we're seeing with um, all this stuff that's going on around the world. I know a lot of people are afraid, like, oh, my God, China's going to ban Bitcoin forever and all these things. But actually what you need is you just need real legislation because people don't kind of know what the situation is like. You know, the casual observer looks and says, oh, my God, China's banning Bitcoin, banning ICOs or all the whatever it might be. Right. A lot of fear gets in the market. But the reality is, is that there's so much dishonesty and scamming going on and so many people are getting you know taken for a ride with their money and this is that we saw this you know a long ago in the past with the stock exchanges with those kind of industries and regulation came in in order to protect investors from you know malicious actors if you will i think we need that same kind of common sense legislation here but it has to be common sense legislation that lets the space flourish while at the same time protecting people from getting screwed over, basically. I think that's a really good point. And I think the the vetting or some kind of registration system for ICOs is one of the biggest and best things they can do, is just to ensure that some random guy living in you know Kazakhstan hasn't pretended to be someone else, created an ICO, um, fraudulently grabbed someone else's identity and then scammed people into giving mm -hmm. $5 million worth of their money. That, I think, is what we need to protect people, especially new people coming into this who are seeing these massive ICO increases and just going, oh, money to be made, money to be made. I just want to stick my money in there. I'm going to be a millionaire. You know, that's, they're the kind of people that I think could benefit from something like that. And I think you bring up a really good point here too, is that everybody wants to make a million dollars overnight. And do people do it? Yes. Are most people going to do it? No. And you got to take a more practical approach here where you got to say, okay, look, what kind of gains am I happy with? You know, am I happy with a hundred percent, 200 percent per year? Well, if that's the case, just go invest in Bitcoin. You'll be okay. Yeah. You know, do you, but do you need to have 500% this week tomorrow? If so, you know, this is where it gets really dangerous with your money because those things that go up that quick often come down that quick and they don't have that steady long-term growth. Steady long-term growth is slower. And to put it in perspective, in the crypto space, if you invest in Bitcoin, you're going to get massive returns in your money. You invest in a bank account, in a, in a CD at a bank, you're going to get a few percent per year. Keep it in perspective that you're two, three, four, five hundred percent. I mean, Bitcoin's grown by from this time last year is probably about eight over eight times in value be happy with the 800 <laughs> <laughs> percent you are so on the money we think so similar you know i did a video a while ago and and any any coin video i think us youtubers are really putting ourselves out there no matter how um, objectively we present that information and i always come back to bitcoin is my number one safest long term because we have yeah. we have eight years worth of data to look at as investment performance. And that's when I love doing um, return on investment and return from growth analysis. And I don't even use the average. I take a really safe approach and I use the median gains. And Bitcoin has had a median gain of between 17 and 25% per month for eight years. That is next level. That is yeah. next level. You cannot match that that I know of in any traditional investment anywhere in the world. So Bitcoin, if people were just like, I want a safe investment in a cryptocurrency, I just want good returns, Bitcoin, that's all you need. That's all you need. It's as easy <laughs> as that. It's as easy as that. You know, for me, a lot of the altcoin investments that I do, I invest in them because they're interesting projects and I like them, you know, like uh, the supercomputer projects. Amazing, great ideas. I think it's fantastic and it's going to add a lot to the future. Will it give me as big of returns as investing in Bitcoin? Not necessarily, but it's mm -hmm. not all about, you know, simply getting those killer returns, which is mm -hmm. great too. But it's also about trying to support some of these amazing tech projects and some mm -hmm. of them will provide amazing returns. Mm -hmm. Others might just provide modest returns. Again, yeah. are you going to make 800%? Well, I made a 500% in my supercomputer. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, so. and, and that's another good point too. Everyone has different uh, risk levels. Everyone's more or less risk averse. I personally am quite risk averse. So um, Bitcoin is not the majority of my portfolio, but I recommend it to new people because it is the safest, hands down. But mm. I, I take on a lot of risk. So I do invest in a lot of altcoins as well. Some I've done well on, uh, others not so well. But it, it is all about doing the research 
being satisfied with what you've chosen, taking responsibility for what you've chosen as well, and <laughs> and just getting as much knowledge as you can and writing it out too. This is the thing. People in the crypto world look at two weeks as a long time. <laughs> it's not a long time. Two years is not a long time. Five years is a moderate time. Ten years yeah. is a good amount of time. Exactly. And that is a really, really important point. And I think that comes in a bit, though, to the mentality of the people who want that 500% daily gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they want it all now. There's no patience in the market. And there's a lot of immature money in the market mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is, you know, they don't see the long term perspective. They don't go, okay, well, Bitcoin, like you said, that great statistic, Bitcoin's performed between 18 and 25% per month for the whole, its whole lifespan, basically, right? Um, take that in perspective right 10 years most people you they go to the bank and they put in like you know money for five years and they mm. cash it out later mm. so this is the thing when people come to me and say hey my light coins down by you know seven eight nine percent this week and <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true john mcafee made a good point actually they were interviewing him the other day and um they said to him you know bitcoin this was a couple of weeks ago they said oh bitcoin's down 20 30 percent what are your thoughts and he's like who cares? He's like, have you looked at how much it's grown? Have you looked at where it's going to go? Who cares if it drops over a couple of weeks? Like he was actually almost dumbfounded by the question because he's thinking so far in the long term. He's just like, huh? Like, what? Like, why would you care if it's down a little bit right now? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the this is the thing. It always comes back to is that it's the long game. You got to play the long game. Mm -hmm. Long game is going to give you the biggest returns. If you'd bought Bitcoin for three bucks, never shorted it once, mm -hmm. you would be up what? A, five thousand eight hundred and forty seven dollars or whatever on your uh, three dollar per bitcoin investment and of course if you'd held it that long you're probably still holding it <laughs> you, you know, know i i look at guys like bite size bitcoin i saw he bought a lamborghini the other day man that guy got in in 2010 oh man how crazy That's is that that's it but the thing is is that anyone anyone investing in cryptocurrencies today in five years time people are gonna look back yes. and go man those guys got in in 2017 what was yes. i doing why wasn't i in bitcoin then i i absolutely agree with you i think it's all relative and um the adoption curve like this is subjective but i think the adoption curve is we are the early adopters so we are in probably between five to ten percent of adoption so that leaves exponential growth over the coming years which as you said would put us right now still at the very beginning that's it and i think a lot of people feel like they've missed the boat and because they didn't get a three bucks or ten bucks or twenty bucks or five hundred bucks then it's over and it's not it's not it's just getting started <laughs> absolutely you know it's it's such a wild ride um as we were talking about last week you know once you get into this space and you you really start to learn the technology and you start to learn blockchains and main chains and sub chains and and the development in this world mm -hmm. it's like you're unplugged from the matrix you just you just see everything in a different light and it's so addictive and you just you're not sleeping and you just it's mind blowing that's it that's it it's just you know it's uh you realize this is the this is the way the future is going to be all these yep. exciting projects that we see coming out and again you go mm -hmm. back to like the supercomputers for example also the smart contract companies with their all the stuff they do and all these different tech projects we see coming up you know we're going to have ebay on the blockchain or an ebay like system on the blockchain and you know the list of projects goes on and mm -hmm. on and on about the way this, this the blockchain technology is revolutionizing things. Mm. IOTA mm. is going to be great for microtransactions mm. and all these different things. So it's a crazy world. It's a crazy world. We're lucky. I, I consider myself um, blessed, and anyone just so lucky, so blessed to be discovering this at this time. It's crazy. Um, but I want to talk to you about your youtube channel and your growth like so i checked sure. just earlier you're nearly up to twelve thousand subscribers man the growth has been phenomenal you're an inspiration to me and i know you're an inspiration to a lot of other people how does it feel to have gotten to where you are and what does the future hold for you interesting question well you know it's it's been a really great um ride really with the youtube channel so far you know when i first started uh blogging really on youtube and start putting a message out there and talking to people about cryptocurrencies and stuff it was just so interesting actually to see the community feel of the subscribers you know behind me saying you know giving advice on stuff and 
all these different things. So that was really, really cool. And I feel like, you know, we're getting a really positive message out to a lot of people, you know, that I'm reaching a lot of people now and trying to, you know, get that message of, hey, guys, remember, it's not about the gains. You know, you don't need to make 500% a day. Look at it long term. Look at the technology, invest in the projects, all this stuff. And, you know, when the market's down, come out, make a video saying it's OK, guys, you can relax. The, the world's not ending. And I think that's, that, that for me was one of the really important things to get across was that message. And the whole reason I started the YouTube channel was I realized how difficult it was for me when I started. And, you know, to get people some advice, some practical information, things to think about, ways to keep up with the news, ways to look at coins, all of these different things. And so, you know, from here on out, uh, basically looking to obviously continue growing the subscriber base and, you know, getting a hold of more people and getting the information out to more people and really just you know evangelizing about bitcoin i suppose when it comes down to it but also we'd like to get some interview more interviews uh happening hopefully i'll be talking to the guys from uh, sonum this week for example yes. and i've been in contact with the guys from pivax and hope to get you know get a hold of those guys soon but in contact the guys from navcoin and you know they're all super busy developers you know doing <laughs> this stuff but <laughs> when they get some projects coming out hopefully talk to those guys i think it's just really interesting to get to talk to those guys too Mm. You know, because I know the people, the subscribers, they want to hear about this. They want to have this inside track. And really, the subscribers are what, you know, give me the ability to get out and do that. Mm. You know, without that subscriber base, without everyone supporting me, I wouldn't be able to talk to those people. So it's kind of a, you know, I wouldn't exist without the subscribers. Mm. It's, you know, just, I think every day, like, how thankful I am to all the people who, you know, support my channel. It's really awesome. So, And that's a good point. And... I'll use this opportunity um, to to personally thank the people on my channel too who go out of their way to take the time to comment and provide that feedback. And I've noticed some of my subscribers are, are subscribed to you too, and they say they comment on your videos as well. For us, for us content creators that are doing this stuff, the fact that people go out of their way to provide that feedback means like the world. Like, and I as I said to you last week, like. Um, when I just was a YouTube watcher before I was a content creator, I never commented on videos. I just watched. Um, I don't think I even liked or disliked. I just watched stuff. I never thought to comment. So I guess I really appreciate the people that are taking the time to provide that feedback because it's, it's allowing us guys not only to grow, but to learn as well and to get better and better as we're in this space. Because I mean, I'm an engineer and a project manager. I never had experience recording videos. I never did this. So it's just a learning process. and. The feedback is just always so appreciated. That's it. it. Yeah, hit the nail on the head. You know, the I find too that mostly it's really, really positive stuff in the comment section mm. too, mm. and I feel like that's kind of a reflection of the excitement around the crypto space in mm. general. Mm. Maybe like one in twenty comments are negative, and I, I don't know. I feel like on YouTube that's a pretty good, pretty good ratio to be honest. Yeah. True. That's a good. That's a good point. You you make a very good point. And and on that as well, how do you feel when the market goes through a huge crash? Are you like, is it harder for you to make content? No, no. I think you know it's market up, market down. Maybe the people uh, are a little more stressed out in the <laughs> comment section, for example. But yeah. but for me, I, I just keep keep doing on you just keep, keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah, that's it. You know, because hey the the fundamental technology behind whatever coin that's I might right. be reviewing hasn't changed because the market's down. That's true. You know, or the long-term potential of Bitcoin hasn't changed because the market's down or the market's up. People that's get a little true. more excited when the market's up. You know, everyone thinks <laughs> we're going to the moon today. Well, I like, <laughs> have attraction next week, guys, but we're going to the moon nevertheless, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's a good point. And I know I've been the same. I mean, it does, uh, I, I would admit that sometimes it is a little bit harder, but I'm like you where, once you understand the fundamental technology, you know where it's going. You know it's just going to keep being adopted. You know it's going to revolutionize every industry, um, every market. It's going to change the world. And it is in the process of that. We are just so early on. So super so exciting stuff. Um, now, as we discussed last week as well, we floated the idea of a potential meetup one day of me coming to Auckland to meet with you and to put an open invitation out for our subscribers. What? What are your thoughts on that? Are you still keen to do that one day? Definitely keen to do that. I think that'd be amazing. I think that'd be amazing really to you know, have, have some meetups and you know, maybe I fly over to Oz one day and we do a meetup over there too. You know, just get, get people involved and sit down, talk to people, have, have a beer with you know, the crypto crowd and <laughs> that'd be awesome for sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's that's my long term plan. Is um, and you notice too that a lot of the same kind of people, are the ones that are commenting, and uh, I'm like building a relationship with these people, and it's so cool, and I would just love to meet a lot of these people. So I reckon, um, yeah, it'd be awesome for both sides of the pond for me and you to catch up one day and and put an invite out there and and to see who turns up. Yeah, it'd be awesome. It'd be absolutely <laughs> awesome. You know, I mean, I had a, uh, there was a guy from Australia actually. Uh, his name is Judd, and he was over here in Wellington uh, last week. And you know, he just kind of popped in and said, "Hey, man, I'm coming to town. Want to talk about cryptocurrency?" I said, "Yeah, absolutely. Let's That's cool. <laughs> Let's go That's awesome. That, you know, so. How cool is that? Yeah, That's good. One. You know, the community is just an amazing place, though. Again, it you is. know, like I said, most people are very, very positive in the space, and most people are really excited to talk about cryptocurrencies, mm. and mm. so it's really cool. Uh, it's a crazy world. It's a crazy world. So, uh, how's the cheese business going? Like? <laughs> the cheese business is all right. Well, we're, st we're just working on recipes right now because uh, nice. we're still in this sort of um, nowhere zone of between licensing. So it's it's going to take a while. I don't think we'll probably be uh, back on the markets until uh, early next year. Unfortunately, it'll take a few months to get the premises and get the okay. new license going and all that stuff. But uh, okay. which is a bit of a hurdle because we really got there, we got to the market, and then you know day day or two later, you get the phone call. Hey, by the way. Your license is canceled. You have to get through a whole different oh. process. So, but that's all right. It's all part of the journey. All part of the journey. You know, I was actually um, I'm a I'm a vegetarian, but I actually went a few years ago. I went vegan for about six months, and um, <laughs> it was actually the best I ever felt. But long story short, the cheese was so bad. It was so bad. Yep. So you're gonna have to send me some samples. I'm keen to try your cheese one absolutely day. well especially <laughs> if you come over to auckland you know i'll just help, I'll help you up a whole uh, whole pile of it but this, this is this is one of the reasons why we got into making vegan cheese is actually because we thought man most of it just sucks <laughs> and, and we could do better and we did do better and a lot of our cheeses in fact all of our cheese is super super tasty nice. and um so yeah it's just about getting it back on the market and i would like to hear your thoughts too back to to cryptos um I know you're a big fan of Neo, as I am. What are, what are your thoughts, opinions on the Chinese market? And, and how do you think they're going to come out when they actually come public with the next steps of the cryptocurrencies in China? What do you think is going to happen there? It's going to be really interesting to see what happens with China when, when they come back. Obviously, we're going to see some you know specific legislation that's going mm. to manage the whole thing. But I think we're also very likely to see some inside players. Mm. And that Neo might very well be one of those inside players when the time comes. They might pass, for example, certain legislations that say all ICOs have to go through X process. And in order to go through X process, you have to go through one of those process providers. And one of them will be Neo, for example, that might work through Ethereum too. But maybe they'll really try and push Neo, and that would actually elevate Neo's status massively if that were to be the case. Hard to say. I don't think they're going to come back and go, hey, actually, we're wrong totally free market go crazy just like it was before it's not going to be like that it will be different and they will try and regulate things and that regulation process might funnel into companies like neo so be really interesting to see how they handle that i think that's a very very good um explanation and i am 110 percent in agreement with that um the chinese are not stupid they're actually I, i've spent a very small amount of time in china but people in my family have spent a lot of time and, and what they say to me is they are very technologically advanced and because the economy has grown so quick in a short amount of time what that has allowed for is their general industry infrastructure is in a sense more newer more modular more adaptable than other western countries infrastructure that has had decades and decades of time to develop so what that means is they quickly adapt to new technologies now da hong fei and the links between Neo and OnChain and the Nest Fund and some of the things that he has said, I think back up your opinion and my feelings are 100% the same. I think at, there will be a time that the Chinese government will come out and they're going to say something. There'll be funnels. When that happens, who knows? But if it does happen, wow, it's going to be an interesting. I mean, I'll be watching Coin Market Cap live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <The opinion. laughs> So to anyone holding Neo, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't take my advice, but I'm holding mine. <laughs> yeah, hold on to it, guys. Hold on to it. Don't sell it when it gets to 40 bucks. Hold on. 
Oh, it's a crazy time. So what are your thoughts on Bitcoin and where do you see Bitcoin going in the next couple of weeks? Uh, look, in the next couple of weeks, it's really hard to say how the market's going to react in um, the run up to uh, particularly Segwit 2X. Mm. I, I just have this real feeling like no one cares about Bitcoin gold. It doesn't have any community support. It's just mm. a way that certain players in the market are going to get mm. millions and millions of dollars mm. because they were able to force the situation. Mm. Yeah, I guess if you're holding your Bitcoin and you're, yeah, I get some free Bitcoin gold, rock and roll. But no one's really excited about it. And that's not really, there's not a lot of drama around that, I don't feel. The real drama is going to be around Segwit 2X. And it will be very curious for me to see how the market reacts. Because when Bitcoin Cash came out, we didn't have a lot of time to react. You know, everything was agreed for Segwit. The Bitcoin Cash, Cash guys came out and said, very last minute, actually, we don't agree. We're, we're splitting the chain. We're making something called Bitcoin Cash. And so we actually had a very short amount of time. Whereas Segwit2x, we've known for a very long time. People have had a long time to think about their strategies, about collecting Bitcoin, holding it for this chain split and all these different things. And so totally unpredictable what's going to happen immediately afterwards, to be honest. Certain camps really support it. Certain camps don't. The exchanges are trying to find a middle ground where they can you know, come out as advantageous as possible. But definitely there's the potential for some wild rides ahead in that situation yeah and you you feel it seems like you hold the same sentiment as me um you know as someone that's been around this for a solid five or six months now these splits are frustrating um they cause this divide and uncertainty which is detrimental to the growth yes we mm -hmm. will get through it and and if anything you could look at it in an optimistic point of view where it's actually providing good entry points because I think once all this uncertainty and upgrades and splitting and whatever the heck it is, is done, then you, you're sort of not going to have these big fear events anymore. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I would say, unless you have big governments come out against it, I think you're going to start to see very strong growth after these events have passed. And the new people to the market who don't fully understand what's going on, the fear is gone. And I think people will be much more willing to enter. I've, I've even heard some, you know, conspiracy theories about that the f reason that some of these forks are happening is that they're trying to deal with any potential arguments in the future. Like, well, what if we switch the algorithm? Did it? Mm. Failed. Well, what if we change block size? Did it? Failed. You mm. know, and that they're actually trying to do a bit of this. And that, that's a, that's a you know pretty deep conspiracy theory there. But nevertheless, I think that we will see actually, like you said, continued positive growth afterwards mm. and it went down to 3000 the other day mm. that was a huge well 3,984 or something like that huge huge potential mm. to buy in there because like i said once things kind of even out it's just going the only thing that could really bring back in such a massive dip at that point would be like if japan did like a total you know 180 and said actually you know we're gonna ban bitcoin mm. which would be unthinkable i i could wouldn't believe japan mm. doing that you know or if uh the u.s came out and said hey by the way bitcoin is now illegal in the u.s well that would have mm. actually a massive impact on the market but again it's not going to happen it's mm. not going to happen they, they want to you know take the tax money from it but they don't want to ban it by any means so it's just going to go up guys mm. Mm. remember what we said earlier in the video people who have looked back on this in 2022 We'll go, man, why didn't I get into Bitcoin in 2017 when I heard those two guys talking about it on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the crazy thing is I had a guy comment, uh, I think yesterday, who watched one of my, I think like one of my first videos. And he said, man, when you made this video, Bitcoin was like three grand. Now it's like five and a half grand US. Like, whoa. And I was like, yeah, you're right. That was only two months ago. <laughs> I know, right? I know. It's it's absolutely gone crazy. I bought a... um. A Litecoin miner, when I paid for it, I paid for it in uh, Bitcoin, and it was about uh, 0.85 Bitcoin at the time, which was like about two grand, right? And I just think, why well, I should have just bought and held the Bitcoin instead of trying to get a bit, you know, this Litecoin miner. It's <laughs> 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 the value increased so much, but that's the yeah, hard you know. thing, that's the hard decisions to make, you know. Uh, what I'm working more towards, and I've, I've had strategies from the start, but having percentages of what to invest and some will go to high risk some will go to low risk some will go to medium risk and it will stay there um, and if it's a methodical approach over time 
I think that, and, and that's a good way to diversify your portfolio as well, not only in asset classes, but in risk classes as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Big believer in that idea as well. You know, I, I'm like you, I'm fairly risk averse in my uh, portfolio. Most of it's geared towards the top end, the most solid long term projects. But yeah. Interesting times ahead. Well, the time has just gone off, mate. I just want to say, a uh, huge thanks from me again, Lark, not only for the first time for giving up the time, but for the second time as well. I think this chat was even better. Um, That's it. You know, to all my subscribers, go and support Lark. Go and sub. You know, it is in everyone's best interest to grow the cryptocurrency community and to be supportive of one another and to help each other. So again, Lark, from me, thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me on. That goes right back to any any of my subscribers listed to this. Not supporting Bo yet? Get over there, subscribe to his channel. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Lark. All right. See you guys. Bye, guys. Cheers.